Leland Vittert, host of On Balance, joining us right now. Leland, uh, marking the end of truly a, a lifetime of achievement with Diane Feinstein passing this morning. Yeah, what a moment, right? Um, and to look back, and I think there, there's now going to be that rightful moment in time to really realize and pay tribute to what sort of serious accomplishments Diane Feinstein had. And you rightfully pointed out there had been a debate about her health over the past couple of months. And now we can take some time and reflect back and say, what a remarkable woman this was, what a remarkable career she had. I thought Joe Khalil uh, rightfully pointed out sort of just how many different firsts there were for Diane Feinstein and what a power uh, she was in the United States Senate and what a political force unto herself um, she was and an inspiration to so many, um, regardless of politics, of how somebody with strong convictions can make an enormous difference um, in America. And whether you agreed or disagreed with her, you always had to admire, um, and people in the Senate always did admire, um, her incredible uh, fortitude. Uh, her incredible sense of moral courage um, and her dedication to the issues that she really believed in uh, most fervently. Yeah, and you know, speaking of those firsts, uh, she was the first woman president of the San Francisco Board of Supervisors, the first woman mayor of San Francisco, one of two of the first women elected to the U.S. Senate from California. We know that uh, House Speaker, former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said Dianne Feinstein right from the start was an icon for women in politics. I know mm -hmm. the answer differs depending on who you ask it to, but but what do you see as, as the legacy she is leaving behind today? I think you're right to point out it really depends on who you talk to um, and whether it's about gay rights in, in her time in San Francisco, whether it's about her looking into the CIA and really doggedly following um, the evidence about what the CIA was involved in in the post 9-11 world and holding them to account. There, there's all sorts of different legacies there. And uh, rightfully, at a time like this, you you all, we all should take a moment and sort of remember the very good parts and not the controversies of somebody's past, uh, somebody who's passed. I think the most important legacy will be somebody um, who was an inspiration to women and who, who sort of mm -hmm. changed uh, what it meant to be a woman in the United States Senate and um, what it meant to be a tenured politician um, there. And she she was a force, not just as a woman, but as a as a senator. Um, and in how she sort of put her mark, not just on, on the Senate, but on American politics um, in general. W what issues um, she's going to be chosen to be remembered by really depends on sort of how you, how you look at things from your own personal political standpoint. Yeah, she certainly, I mean, at the time that she ran for public office uh, with the Board of Supervisors first and then made uh, mayor uh, because of the assassination, uh, she has certainly been someone who made history whether you are a Democrat or a Republican, she did things that most women never did. I mean, the trailblazer of all trailblazers for so many who aspired to public office, not only in the state of California, but across the country. Uh, and obviously, you know, you knew where she stood on a variety of issues. Uh, she stayed pretty steadfast about issues like abortion throughout her entire career. There was yeah. her flip-flop on uh, capital punishment, initially uh, supporting it at the beginning of her career. By the end of her career, she was against capital punishment. Uh, but the one thing she was resolute about, she, she knew that she was a role model uh, for other women and other lawmakers. And it was sad that towards the end of her life, all of that had been eclipsed by the fact that she was having problems with her health. She was having problems with her memory. Others had to speak for her. And there was this back and forth over whether she should resign. Do you think that looking back on this, more people obviously will look at her legacy? But will we maybe consider whether or not those who serve beyond a certain age should have a plan in place so that we don't go back and forth? This doesn't yeah. have to become public discourse. I, I, I'm sure those conversations will take place over the next uh, I don't know, few days, few weeks, and, and for obvious reasons now, um, even even with the passing of Diane Feinstein, there's those conversations still still are front and center in the American mind. I I think that with her passing, though, it gives us the opportunity to kind of take a step back. And I'm hearing now both from Republicans and Democrats who are texting me um, in, as as this is happening from Capitol Hill. And really what they're remembering is the, the, the legacy she leaves behind. And I think um, in the same way that had she resigned um, while she was still alive, there would have been um, a moment and a time for tributes and for um, 
lionizing her rightfully um, for for the differences that she made, whether you agree or disagree with them, but the sort of the, the really unique place that she has um, in modern American politics. Um, and I think that will happen now. Um, Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.